All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the best bushcrafting knife you will probably never own. Now, this isn't my first rodeo doing a video on the LT Wright Legome or Legum, depending on how you want to say that uh, Swedish word. But today I thought it would be worth going over talking about the Legum again because I really do love using this tool and it is one of the coolest bushcrafting knives out there and I'm primarily putting this video out there not so much to say like haha I have this knife and you don't even though some people will invariably take this video as that kind of meaning but ultimately there are a handful of people that always come to me and they're pretty much you know like always asking like have you heard of the LT Wright Legum what do you think of it have you used it have you had one you know would you buy one so I like to make videos periodically on these more unattainable knives that I have somehow managed to obtain and to give my opinions thoughts and ultimately tell you guys like should you get one of these so that's ultimately really what the core premise of this video is today or about today is just really talk about the legome my experiences with it and why you should definitely pick one up if you can find one so first off let's talk about how these things or why these things are unobtainable so the first thing is and i'm not even 100 sure they're still making them but they should be but basically you can only get one of these off of one singular website and that's ben's backwoods and they are made in small batches by of course lt right hence the name lt right um lego and so these are made by lt right handcrafted knives and they're made in small batches specifically for ben's backwoods so Already speaking about it, these aren't like really a main stock item for LT Wright. They're made in batches and then sent to Ben's Backwoods. So the only way you can buy one, unless you find someone like on the secondary market selling one, which by the way, no, mine is not for sale. Just for just clarification there. This is about the only other way you're gonna find one of these. So pretty much these guys are very hard to find for those two reasons. Now, if you do happen to find one or Camrat, I believe it is, Cramrat, something along those lines, which is the smaller brother to this guy, um, they are definitely worth picking up. Now they come with a simple leather sheath like this, and I would say that if I had any criticism against this knife, it would definitely be this sheath because as I'm not going to do, flipping this guy upside down, there is zero retention in this sheath. Like it is zero. So this thing will literally just slide right out of its sheath if you are not careful. So that's probably like the biggest disadvantage of it. And unfortunately, I don't really think there's any way to fix that because the primary reason why this thing is so loosey goosey in any sheath is due to this handle. Now this handle is very puko esque so this blade as a whole as the name would kind of infer is generally a very scandinavian styled blade but this handle being its shape and its overall lack of like contouring there's nothing really here for like a kydex sheath to lock into certainly nothing for a leather to wet form so unfortunately there's really no good sheathing option for like amazing retention however that being said it does make for an incredibly comfortable knife in hand. Now this thing is in direct comparison to like a proper Puko, this handle is a little bit more oval or ovular, I guess you could say ovular. I don't know how you'd want to say that, but it's basically elongated. So most Puko styled knives are going to be very short and round in their handle, but this has like this flare out in the middle that makes it incredibly comfortable to hold for however long, like indefinitely. This is a knife that you could sit around a campfire and just carve and craft for a very long time. And that was really what the Legome was designed for. And part of the people who made this knife was the late Morse Kohansky, um, who ran, uh, what is it, Karamat Wilderness Ways. And so this knife has probably decades of bushcraft experience imbued into it and that's why it is like so utterly simple but yeah whenever you hold it use it it just makes so much sense in addition to that too so it's made out of o1 tool steel which you guys can see i've blued mine and some people wonder why i blued mine it was because i was out in the field got this guy wet on a very very humid day and uh, i thought i cleaned it up but apparently i had not cleaned it as well as i thought so it started to patina anyways so I cleaned up the patina and then blued over everything to just make it a consistent like it was already beginning to kind of blue and you know get a patina naturally so I was just like might as well just blue the whole thing so it looks consistent even and at least 
good to me. So that's how it ended up blued. But aside from that, um, yeah, this thing is just really, really freaking cool. And of course, the spine is sharpened for striking ferro rods, which it does very well. The blade is a very nice Scandi grind made out of 01 tool steel, as I previously mentioned. And my particular edition is in the orange G10 or Delrin. I believe it's orange G10. Um, and the reason why I wanted the orange G10, this is one of the few cases, like I have only a handful of orange G10 knives. So you guys can see here but the reason why i wanted this one in orange g10 was that that is the model that morse kohansky had so if you look back at his videos before he passed um, he did a few videos going over like his knife collection and he did have an lt right legome and it was with the orange g10 scales so that's the reason why i wanted mine to be this way to look this way and uh yeah so Anywho, that is uh, my LT Wright Legome. As far as picking these guys up, like I said, these are very, very difficult to come by, but if you do find one, I would heavily recommend. Like This is one of those handful of bushcrafting knives that I would say like you could that could end your collection. Like this knife, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, the Bar or Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore, if you like bigger knives, are some of the knives that like truthfully if you get any one of those knives or multiple of them like if you have several of those different uh, models these are knives that could genuinely like end your collection and what i mean by that is like you really don't need anything if you have a bark river knives bushcrafter like just train with it it's really good if you have a uh, LT Wright Legome, it's really good. Like, you just train with it. You don't really need anything. Now, of course, I am a dyed in the wool knife collector, so that's part of what I do. I go out and collect knives because I enjoy to, or I enjoy doing that. Um, that's my passion. But as far as it goes, like, realistically, this could be like a one and done tool. So long as you don't lose it, like, this is a really, really solid knife. And uh, you're gonna be able to do just about any realistic wilderness bushcrafting tasks. It's not gonna be the best survival knife like straight out and out survival knife but truthfully speaking like this is one of the all-time like best bushcrafting knives ever created and really like when you look back at the people who made it and lended their hand into designing you'll quickly see why that's the case all right guys that's pretty much all i have to say about the lt right legome like i said if you find one try to pick it up they are really good knives they just really are quite tricky to find and quite hard to find but uh definitely amazing and if you can get one straight from ben's backwoods they i believe they still go for under 200 dollars. so like really they are probably one of the best knives for bushcrafting under 200 dollars that you can get outright just done Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.